I'm packing for a huge trip to Sydney, Australia. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about my essential travel tech. We'll talk about what it is, how I pack it, and I'm gonna share some tips that I've learned after taking almost 50 work trips. Let's get right into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Desmond. I make content about tech and travel, and we are gonna be talking all about my essential travel tech gear. This is a video I've been really excited to make, and since I am packing for a massive flight over to Sydney, Australia, it feels like the perfect time to walk you through all of the essentials that I carry with me on a flight. Now I have done a ton of travel over the years, tens and tens of thousands of miles, and I found packing bags into bags to be the most effective strategy. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but in this video, we're gonna go through all of the items I pack in my bags, and ultimately, we're gonna talk about the bag that I carry everything in to make it seamless and carry on only. Let's start with a few things that are just in the pockets. I think it's probably no surprise, I have an iPhone 15 Pro Max. I travel with this everywhere or any iPhone. This is my main method of communication. And what you'll notice on this iPhone is the Polar Pro Light Chaser case and a variable ND filter. Not the most important thing for most travelers, but I do create a ton of content on the go and I like to get the most out of my iPhone. So having a variable ND filter allows me to just have more control over the settings of the iPhone camera, especially when I'm shooting video. Next is gonna be my new travel wallet. This is an interesting product. This was sent to me by Double Oak. And what's nice about it is one, I actually really like the material. This is made from a high quality leather, but it has some additional functionality here. I have a card case that lets me store six of my most used cards. And again, with a quick push of a button, I have easy access to all of them. So this is great for when I'm making my way through the airport and I need to get to a credit card and an ID to get into the lounge, or I need to quickly pay for something, or when I get to my destination city and I just need to quickly access any of my cards really easily. The other thing I like about this particular travel wallet is that you can take the card dispenser out of this leather case and it is then MagSafe compatible. So you can magnetize the card dispenser to the back of my iPhone and I have easy access to all of my cards without the extra bulk of the leather cover. And then there's a pen. I always travel with a pen. This is just one of my Mont Blanc pens. I keep this in the bag, but again, when you get to your destination, you gotta fill out custom swarms, you gotta do anything. Always have a pen with you. And then the last thing in the in my pocket or always on me category is my travel watch. This is different than the watch I wear every day just because it's built a little bit differently and for a different purpose. This is the Rolex Explorer 2. Uh, I love this particular watch. It's the polar dial, and this is the one from the 1990s, so not the latest or the newest one, but I just like this particular style and the size. I think it's great for travel. And what's special about the Rolex Explorer 2 over some of my other watches is it does have a GMT function, which means it does track another time zone. So for me, when I'm traveling to different countries, I actually always have one of these set to my home time zone and the other set to local time. Uh, that is just probably the most convenient thing ever. It, it is an automatic movement, so it just needs kinetic energy to keep itself running. It is waterproof up to a hundred meters and, and the entire case and bracelet is brushed metal. So it is very durable, does not pick up scratches easily, and it's the perfect companion for when I travel, regardless of destination. This thing is always going to hold up to whatever I put it through. So now let's start getting into some of the pouches. We're gonna start smallest to largest, and again, ultimately to the main carry-on bag. But I have a tech pouch here. This is from Grams 28. I think this is their 131. And this has become one of my favorite tech travel pouches because one, functionality-wise, I think this thing is really well built. The materials, this is a high quality pebbled Italian leather, but not only that, if you look at the zippers here, this is all weather sealed zippering. And I really like that. There's a lot of products that I have that are leather that don't necessarily take advantage of other technologies out there like weather sealed zippers. So this kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Yes, leather may not hold up well to water or moisture, but it's fine. These zippers will keep all of that out of your tech peripherals. 
So zipping this little pouch open, the first thing I'm gonna grab is my Ray-Ban Meta sunglasses. I think for travel tech, this has become an essential because it's two things in one, right? One, it's sunglasses for any sunny day needs, but two, there's a camera built into these as well as an AI assistant. So when I have these on, I can take photos, I can take videos, I can activate the AI to give me information, weather, directions, any type of facts that I need wherever I'm traveling. And also there are speakers built into these so that I can listen to a podcast, music, um, a phone call, and all of that is piped directly into my ear. So this is a great addition to the travel kit and it's something that's really easy to carry. Next travel essential you'll find in here is tiny. These are a set of AirPods. These are the AirPod 3s, but they could be pros. It doesn't really matter. I always just bring a pair of AirPods with me. If it's for phone calls, listening to uh, music, listening to a movie, anything where I just need um, quick and easy access to headphones. And finally, in this little pouch is going to be my DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This has become my go-to run and gun video camera setup for when I'm making my way between destinations. So going through an airport, taking video of suitcases and bags on the airplane, just getting B-roll as I move from location to location, I found that this tiny little camera has been fantastic because it means I don't have to pull out my entire setup. I don't have to worry too much about lighting or audio. I can just take this out, turn it on, and I can film stable, high quality video for the channel or for any of my social media accounts. And again, the nice thing is the footprint. So if I'm filming something quick on an airplane or if I'm doing something in an airport or in a cab or whatever it is, it's not some gigantic setup that throws people off. It is tiny, it's really inconspicuous. And if I'm holding it in my hand and recording, most people only see the little head here. So like I said, it doesn't draw a lot of attention to myself, especially as a travel kind of content creator. I'm always shooting things on the go in weird places where it's just odd to see a person with a camera. Next, I have my pouch from Alpaca. This houses an action camera and a few other content related peripherals. First thing I'll say, I actually really like this because of the shape of the pouch. It's already squared off. So fitting a bunch of square shaped tech gear in here is kind of perfect. We'll just start with this box here. This is my DJI Mic 2s. We have two high quality mics and a wireless receiver. So normally what I'll do is I will plug this directly into my travel camera and I will mic myself up by magnetizing this to my shirt or holding it up and I can start recording really high quality audio directly to the camera. Now I also showed you my Osmo Pocket 3. These transmitters will connect to that camera wirelessly. So no need for this additional receiver. And that makes it again, super easy to just take that camera out, film, talk, and be relatively inconspicuous as I create content. And the carrying case, which is also a charging case, always goes in this pouch. Next, I mentioned action cameras. This is the DJI Action 4 and just, again, a little tripod. The reason why I always bring an action camera as well as some of these other cameras is this can go where none of those other ones can. This is completely waterproof. It is something that I'm not very worried about damaging or breaking. I have a case on here as well, but if I wanna go swimming, if I wanna do something a little bit more adventurous, go find a waterfall or go jet skiing or ATVing, this is the camera I would bring because the other gear that I have is a little bit more fragile and would not hold up to anything too adventurous. But I always have an action camera. It takes up no space. It could go in my pocket and then hop into the ocean. No problem. Other little things I keep in here though that are important, charging cables and a gigantic Apple charging brick. And now we are moving up in pouch sizes. Now stay with me, there is a reason to this insanity. All of these pouches do end up in a bigger bag. It's just great for organization. So let's talk about what's in this big guy. First, let's talk about the pouch itself. This is also from Grams 28. This is their 133. You can tell here that it is significantly larger than the 131. They serve different purposes. But in here is my bigger camera equipment. Again, the reason why I like throwing it in here is you can't tell from the camera, but I can feel the leather is really thick. It's sturdy. It also has these weather sealed zippers and there's padding built into this. So this was already designed with keeping 
fragile camera equipment and other tech peripherals in mind. The other thing that's really nice as I zip it open is it opens kind of envelope style so it doesn't just fall out and dump all your gear. Now, let's get into what's inside. When I travel, I always bring extra battery packs. So here we've got a thin anchor battery pack. This thing is pretty good. I think it's about 10,000 ma, but this is just something I like to use when I'm running about the city. I can just throw it into a bag. It takes up no space and it will charge an iPhone or any of my other tech peripherals at least once over. It has USB-C and USB-A ports. Next, what we'll find is an SD card holder. This is from PGY Tech. It has four slots for larger SD cards, just again, because I take and create so much content on these trips. The other nice thing is it has a built-in card reader. So I can take my SD cards out of my cameras or out of here, plug it in, plug this directly into my iPad, my laptop, or even my iPhone via USB-C, and then I can easily edit the content or the photos that I've taken on the trip. It's all housed in this really nice rugged rubberized case. So I don't have to worry about anything destroying the important memories and content that I'm creating on these trips. The other thing that I'll say about this pouch is great organization, additional pockets inside. And in one of those pockets, I keep this. This is the Solace 5G. I think for a lot of you that don't travel internationally, this may not be a piece of tech that matters that much, but this is a wireless hotspot, as in this thing generates its own Wi-Fi signal for all of my tech peripherals, my phone, my laptop, whatever I need, and wherever I need internet in the world. The nice thing about the Solace 5G is I'm able to buy global Wi-Fi passes, so I can activate this in any single country, and I will have access to 5G Wi-Fi. It is incredible. And on top of that, this uses what they call eSIM technology. So I don't need to buy a SIM card in the different countries. This thing will just automatically connect to the local provider and give me direct access to that internet. And the plans are relatively cheap. I think this thing has been fantastic. It has a great touchscreen so you can manage your plan and your passwords and all your settings directly from the device itself. And overall, this thing has been an incredible ad for all of my international travel. Plus, a nice bonus, it doubles as a portable power bank. So you can charge your phone and give it internet in any country in the world. So now let's get to the big stuff. In this pouch, I have a lens. So right now I'm filming with my 35 millimeter G Master Sony. This is an 85 millimeter Batis. It's about the same size, but when I travel, the lens that I will always bring with me is my Sony 35 millimeter G Master 1.4, uh, about the same size, but it fits right in here. And a camera, I will bring either one of two. Usually it's this, this is my Leica Q2. This is my primary everyday and travel street photography camera. The Leica Q2 is a fantastic fixed lens camera. It has, I think, 47 some odd megapixels, a beautiful lens. Uh, it is what I bring with me everywhere. And I like it because it's tiny and it's inconspicuous. So again, I can go to a cafe, I can go into a restaurant, I can traverse a new city and not draw too much attention to myself with a smaller camera setup. So I just play it by ear if I'm going into a part of the city or if I'm going into a restaurant where a big camera is gonna be unsightly or draw too much attention, I will always have this on me and I'll whip this out so I can still take photos and capture some video. And again, the Leica Q2, the lens, the Solace, all of these tech peripherals fit into the 133 really, really well. And once zipped up, everything looks neat, organized. I've got a nice top handle to move this thing around and I'll show you how it fits into my main carry-on bag in a few. So we are here at the last bag before we get to the main bag. And surprisingly enough, this fits in my main bag. This right here is my camera sling. This is the Ona Rockaway sling in the black leather. And one of the reasons why I really like this is because it holds my standard travel camera setup. It carries really well like a sling bag. The materials are nice. This is the new leather version. So the leather on this is very thin, but it keeps this bag very light. Ona bags are known for great quality, but their leather bags, their older ones have been very, very heavy because of the thickness of leather that they've used, which isn't always a bad thing, but when you're carrying around heavy camera gear, the weight adds up. Now inside this bag though, is my main travel camera setup. 
This is the Sony a7R5, and on it is the Sony 24 to 70 G Master Mark II. This is my go-to camera. It shoots fantastic photos, has a 61 megapixel sensor, incredible resolution, and it also shoots fantastic video. So this thing, again, can deliver S-Log3. It has fantastic image quality. All the images shot out of this match my FX3 and my ZV-E1. So I can film video footage with all three of these cameras and they'll always match up from a color perspective in post-production. And it just makes my life a lot easier. So although this does look like a big camera setup, it beats carrying two cameras. It's one camera that can shoot anything and everything in any situation. And that is why I always have this with me. So the A7R5 and the 24 to 70 go into this sling bag. And when I get to the hotel, I will usually just grab this bag, maybe throw in the extra 35 millimeter lens or the Leica some extra batteries, close it up, and this is all I will take around the city. So I leave the main bag and all the different pouches, and I will just figure out what needs to go in here, and this is my city pack. So finally, let's talk about the main bag. This is my main carry-on bag right here. This is the Nomad Lane Bento bag, and I really love the size of this carry-on bag because even though it looks tiny, it fits all of the tech and the pouches that I've just shown you and we'll walk through how it fits and it still ends up being a great size. This will fit under the seat in front of you on the airplane. It also has a ton of built-in organization. So not only am I already packing in a bunch of pre-organized pouches, the bag itself has a ton of organization built right into it that make it even better to carry around. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this for you so you can get an idea and why I really like it. It kind of opens like a suitcase, which is really nice. So on this side, you've got our laptop pocket. This is where my laptop or iPad Pro would go. And on this side, you're gonna see another compartment. It's mesh here. So now let's go ahead and pack all of this so you can see what this little bag actually fits. Let's start by opening this up. And what you can see is it looks kind of like a suitcase. It opens up very clamshell style, which is great for packing. And on this side, you're going to see the black mesh pocket. We're going to open it up. This is where I'm going to fit my Ona Rockaway sling with the camera inside. Now we've got some extra space here, but we'll save that for later. We'll zip it up. Now I'm going to go over to the other side and we're going to zip open this large pocket that has the laptop compartment on it. Inside this compartment now, I'm gonna put the Grams 133. This is that larger pouch with my lens and some additional camera gear in it. And over here, you'll see I've actually got a lot more space. So I'm gonna put in the Grams 131. And there's a reason why I put it here because this pocket actually has another access point from the outside. So if I need to quickly grab that pouch with some of my more important, smaller tech peripherals, I have quick access to it. And as you can see, everything fits into this bag right here. I will tell you the bag in bag strategy has been my go-to. All the organization that happens before you even pack your main bag is really important for saving space and for when you get to the airport, the hotel, when you wanna quickly access a very specific item very easily and efficiently, this has been the best system for me. And if I'm sitting on a plane for 18 hours, I kind of want all of my tech and entertainment, all my things with me so that I can quickly grab them. And having to dig through like a deep backpack or search through, you know, a duffel bag with not a lot of organization is a real pain. So having everything pre-organized and then packed in makes it super, super easy because I can pull a few pouches out at a time before takeoff and just have them there for when I quickly need it. You know, I can easily grab an iPad mini out of one of these outside pockets. I can grab my headphones out. It's just very, very simple, but it all comes down to pre-organizing everything into pouches and bags before you pack it into your main carry-on. All right, I know that was a long video. If you guys enjoyed this content, hit that like button. I'll try to make more how-tos and tips, tech and tip series, all of that good stuff, um, but subscribe for more videos just like this. I will catch y'all in the next one. Mm -hmm.